Shalom. Koloim la Yahweh Bashim Yahushah Bashim Chakwadash. Double honors to the elder apostles of the great millstone who were well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect tabernacle of David, scattered all the four corners of the earth. And um, I just want to do a reply to the super simp. All right, um, I just saw a elder apostle of bars uh, video. And uh, you can tell that this individual was raised under a matriarchal household in which you know the majority of jake household is uh under that matriarchal um setup and we know that's all by design and that's how you destroy a nation by breaking the family structure and uh you know they've managed to uplift uplift the woman you know exalt her over the man and so now the man has no worth he has no backbone he has no dignity so of course when the sons are born they're born under that same ideology and it's taught by their mothers and it's passed down to generations so this dude you know who uh the elder in baltimore made a reply re a video to you know he's just a victim at the end of the day you know under the curse in uh, isaiah the third chapter the 12th verse you know, for, as for my people, uh, you know, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. All right. And basically those are considered their leaders. So anyway, I'm, uh, you know, play and I'm going to actually commentate and address, you know, this dude's madness that he's trying to spew out, you know, thinking that, you know, he's confounding, you know, the Israelites. So let's uh let, let's play the video real quick. Israelites deception. Can a woman teach men? The ISUPK camp and many other Hebrew Israelite camps, they always use those two scriptures that Paul said, just like they always talking about the the Christian church always said. Oh, they don't understand the writers of Paul. The Hebrew Israelites, they also don't understand the writers of Paul. But like I said, I'm not here to insult anybody personally. I am here to break this stuff down, which I'm about to do right now. The Hebrew Israelites, they teach precept, but they don't teach context. Let's start out with Deborah first. There was a woman that was married, meaning this woman that was married had her leader there, and her husband, who was the leader, wasn't leading. The woman that was married was the one that was leading. Deborah, she was leading the men of Israel. And guess what? That was the only time in Israelite history that a woman was able to judge and lead Israel. That was the only time because the men, if you go back and read and, and revisit the history, when you read Judges, yeah, m most of the judges were, were, were men, but Israel kept dropping the ball. They kept doing evil in the sight of the Lord. And it became shameful and a reproach to, to the nation of Israel that the Lord ended up raising up a woman and, 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 and had her become a judge to lead the nation. And guess what? When we got the victory um, over uh, that particular nation that we was at battle with, if Barak didn't actually go and wage war, because, you know, he his, his, his faith was kind of low. And he wanted, you know, uh, Deborah with him. If it wasn't for his strength and, and the Lord using that weak man to actually uh, go out there and actually fight in that battle, all right, which the Lord, you know, used a, a weak man and, 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 and strengthened him, we wouldn't have been able to win that uh, war. So what would have happened without uh, Barak? And why is he mentioning uh, Hebrews 11 chapter when it comes to uh, the acts of faith? And why wasn't Deborah mentioned? But you won't talk about that. But let's carry on. Now, only is she leading these men in 
the war. She's telling these men what God is saying. So what is that telling you? Next question. What is a prophetess? A prophetess is a person that speaks God's words. Who else speaks God's words? A preacher, a teacher. And in the beginning. Well, hey, Miriam was a prophetess too. When we read um, Exodus, the, 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 the 15th chapter, you know, she was pretty much singing about the victory over the Egyptians. But she was also, you know, prophesying. So Miriam, despite the fact that she was a woman, she prophesied. But guess what? She wasn't the one that led Israel out of Egypt. She wasn't the one that led us into the wilderness. All right. Yeah, she was a prophetess. Women can be prophetess. There are uh, female prophetess, but they're not going to be the ones leading the nation of Israel. There was only rare, one rare occasion. But you will not find that throughout the rest of, 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 of Israelite history. All throughout the rest of the scriptures, you will never find that. All right. You had one woman who tried to sit on the throne, but she did it by evil means. She had, you know, uh, uh, her own relatives murdered so that she can uh, sit on the throne. And what happened to her? Athaliah. What happened to Athaliah? Come on, man. A lot of y'all misinterpret Paul's letters. Y'all misinterpret his letters. So whenever y'all go to scriptures like 1 Corinthians 14 and 34 and through 35, y'all try to tell women that, oh, y'all gotta be silenced. Y'all can't do any speaking in the church. That's not what they're saying. See, for one, you have to have the understanding of the context of what's going on in that story in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. You have to understand what's going on. The context yeah, this dude, he he he's trying to get him a congregation of women. This is crazy, man. Let's see how he twists the narrative. All right, so he's gonna speak for Apostle Paul. He's an expert on the writings of Apostle Paul when it comes to that to, to the woman. So he he's about to break down the, the the true context of what Paul said. So let let's hear this fool. This is what's going on. If you start at the very first verse, it tells you was talking about. Um, prophecies, Paul is speaking about gifts, Paul is also speaking about tongues, that is what he's talking about. He's not talking about a woman can't literally speak in church and she has to be silent in the church. When you read verse 33 in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he substantiates that God is not the author of confusion. Why did he say that? He was talking about speaking in tongues, the gifts of God. The now, actually, he was speaking on order in the church. That's why he said what he said. The Lord is not the author of confusion. Let all things be done decently and in order. Because the church of Corinth, there was a lot of confusion going on in the church. That's what was going on. Okay? You have women that were exalting themselves. You have women that thought that they can uh, speak and teach other men in the church. Let's, let, let's, let's go to 1 Corinthians 11. That's where you need to actually start. 1 Corinthians 11 and 1, it says... And notice that it says right here in the heading, Christian order. All right, or, or the, basically the church, the, the church order. It says, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Hamashiach. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. All right. Another, another word for ordinance is order. Okay, commands. Right, let's look up the definition. And the Greek word is uh, par paradasis. And it says, 
a giving over which is done by word of mouth or in writing, i.e. tradition by instruction, narrative, precept. Objectively, that which is delivered, the substance of a teaching of the body of precepts, especially ritual, which in the opinion of the later Jews were orally delivered by Moses and orally transmitted in unbroken succession to subsequent generations, which precepts both illustrating and expanding the written law as they did were to it's like as they did were to be obeyed with equal reverence so the instructions the precepts that i'm giving you to keep order in the church those ordinances were to be taken as with equal reverence as they would with the mosaic law okay that way confusion wouldn't ensue Because without the law, if there's lawlessness, all you're going to have is nothing but chaos. Shit will get out of control. All right? They had to maintain a standard. There was a way of living that they had to conduct themselves. All right? We had to move under a certain uh, conduct behavior even when it uh, uh, concerns you know our moral structure so let's go back and it says it says now I praise you brethren that I that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you but I would have you know that the head of every man is a mashiach and the head of the woman is the man. Order. And the head of a mashiach is the most high. All right. So right here, he's, te he's teaching about the, uh, the structure of honor. We know the most high gets the most honor and then the son and then the man, the Israelite man. And then, you know, the woman up under the man. So in the church, when there is a bunch of men and you have men that are speaking, the women have to pretty much uh, play their position. They have to be silent up under their men, especially if they're uh, married. That's why in the 14th chapter, if you had a husband, it was better that you learn under your husband at home. So what the hell is this guy talking about? Women were, were naturally shamefaced in the ancient world. When they were uh, around men, they were shamefaced. They didn't speak much at all in the presence of men. But if you listen to this dude, you think that them women in there was able to pull precepts and, and, and raise their voice in the church. This guy's out of his mind. Right, it says, every man praying or prophesying having his head covered dishonor of his head, but every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncover, uncovered dishonor of her head, which is what her husband, for she is even all one as if she were shaven. Or if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. Okay? For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of the Most High, but the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. All right. And I don't even have to really uh, read the rest of the chapter. Because he was basically giving them order, man. This is, you know, how we ought to uh, conduct ourselves. You know. The structure of, of, of family, the structure of, uh, of of honor, even down to your appearance, man. A man is not supposed to wear long hair. That that a woman is supposed to have long hair. That's her glory. The woman is a man's glory. All right. He was denouncing uh, the femininity of men in in the church. He wasn't with that. 
all right? Because that was a shameful thing for a man to have long hair or to, to have any trait of a woman. Okay? It, 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 it ain't like today where, you know, men can, can have that metro look and, and still be considered or, or uh, respected as a man. So anyway, you know, that's uh that's it on that. Now let's go to the 14th chapter. And you know, as you can see, which he's 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 right on it, you know, at the at the start of the chapter in the 14th uh chapter, he has going into um the gift of prophesying. And then it goes into speaking tongues, which I'm pretty sure that dude don't know what it actually means to speak in tongues. All you got to do is uh, read Acts, the second chapter. And, you know, reading that that uh, that particular act when the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles. Is demonstrating the power of the Holy Spirit that they was able to speak in tongues. And what exactly were they doing? They were speaking different languages. They wasn't speaking, you know, the, the, the gibberish, you know, uh, 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 chatterbox speaking that they do in the church today. When you don't even know what the hell you're saying and people don't know what the hell you're saying, because that's confusion, too. All right. So that's why it was commanded that if you have. Uh, 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 if you have somebody that's prophesying in tongues. Somebody that knows the language that you speak and needs to interpret it. All right. That's why when we, you know, sometimes we'll speak Hebrew. And if a person don't know what we're saying, we'll say it in the English. All right. And then you go down. You know, it says uh, instruction for the church, basically um, order, ordinance. Okay, let's jump down to uh, yeah, 1 Corinthians 14 and 33 says, For the most high is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Let your woman keep silence in the churches. That's an instruction. He ain't saying this in regards to speaking tongues and prophecy. He's saying, no, the woman, she just has to be quiet. For it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also say of the law. What the hell is this guy talking about? Why he didn't mention this part? And if they will learn anything, let, the, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. OK, now I'm curious. I want to see in the cross references what other precepts come up, you know, uh, for this verse right here. Um, First Corinthians 11 and three. See, that's why I started over there in the 11th chapter, because that's where it starts at when he gives the instruction, the order of the church. He's talking about, oh, it's just in the context of the gift of prophesying and speaking in tongues. What, what, what? Now you the one that's uh, spinning uh, the context. You the one that's spinning the narrative. Dude, if, if, if you're trying to get women, all you got to do is just say that, man. All right? There's plenty of women that will gravitate to you based on what you're talking about. Having itch, itching ears. All right. And then, you know, it, it proceeds more from that chapter. That's why I started there. And then you got the, the epistle to the church of Ephesus. What is he saying right there? Uh, Ephesians 5 and 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. All right. Because what? The man is, is, is your head. Just like Yahweh is our head. So he's our Lord. Well, the man is the Lord of the woman. 
For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the search is subject unto Hamashiach, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. In everything. So if, her, if, if, if the wife has any reverence for her husband, she's not going to dishonor him. She's not going to, you know, put him to a shame, you know, by being a wanton and undisciplined and, and shameless in public. All right. He, he, he kept reiterating it to, to all the damn near all the churches. Colossians 3 and uh, 18, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. That's what this is talking about. A woman being in order. So let me let me get this one. Since he says that, you know, the woman can teach and, 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 and lead. Well, yeah, she can teach and lead. She can teach and lead her children and other younger women, especially if she's an aged woman. All right. Because, you know, an older woman. You know, based on her experience, she knows more. So, of course, she can share that with younger women. And that's what's missing in society today. That's why these young broads today, they're lost. They don't have that that generation of women, you know, from, you know, years back. that actually grew up in a traditional household. That knew the roles of, uh, of being a wife and a mother. That understood the importance of, of having a husband in a the family. They're not raised with that anymore. And that's where everything, uh, you know, failed. Titus 2 and 3, it says, The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. And they're not being taught that now. They're being told to go and, 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 and live your best life and go go seek after a career. And go join the academy, you know, go join the police force. Go get to the bag. All right. Go get an abortion. That don't sound like love your children. It says to be discreet. No, these women don't have that these days. Chaste, meaning what? Pure. All right. The, the chastity of, of, of the modern woman now, <laughs> you can forget it, man. Keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands. A lot of these, most of these women, they don't even uh, have these characteristics, man. So how, how, how would they uh, be good leaders? How? That the word of the Most High be not blasphemed. So, you know, this guy right here, he's just pandering. Okay. But nowhere in the scriptures does it say that, you know, a woman, you know, uh, would be able to uh, teach and lead whole churches. All right. That, that's that. Come on, man. Knock it off. want to understand you gotta want to understand because a lot of the brothers like i said in the hebrew is like community they run from brothers like me they run from brothers like me they don't like you know what you right you you you're definitely right they will run from you because you are you a straight fool man all right go from the presence of a foolish man when you perceive not the lips of knowledge also let me get this as well Let's go to uh, John 10. This is uh, John 10 and verse 5. And it's talking about the Lord's sheep. All right, John 10, and I'll start at 4. It says, and when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. 
Hey, you a stranger, homie. We don't we don't know you. And you're definitely not speaking. We definitely don't hear the Lord's voice through you. Because this is not advice that the Lord would have given to his men. What woman were part of the 12, like the uh, elder apostle Gabar uh, mentioned? I'm, I'm just saying. I'm going to read it again. It says, and a stranger will they not know, but will flee from them, for they know not the voice of strangers. And you know what else will run from you? You know what else is running from you? Let's go to, uh, real quick, Wisdom of Solomon. Uh, this is also what runs from you. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, and verse 6, it says, Actually, uh, verse five, it says, for the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. <laughs> All right. And you're deceiving, man. So we know that the, the, the Holy Spirit is definitely not upon you. All right. It says, and remove from the thoughts that are without understanding. So when you don't have understanding, wisdom will, 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 will stay away from you, man. It will flee from you. And will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. So wisdom is also running from you. All right? You're, you're, you're not fit for this. Good a, a good try though. So, you know. I can keep on and on about it, but, you know, this guy right here, he's, he, you know, like the Apostle Gabar, you know, titled his video. He's, he's just a super simp. Uh, these type of dudes, you know, they like to, uh, you know, twist the scriptures and, 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 and twist the narrative to, to suit certain people, you know, at their disposal. And you can see that he's trying to target women. For for audience. All right. You wanna you wanna uh, subvert whole houses, and 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 lead captive silly women laden with iniquity and diverse lust. Who's never uh, uh who's who's ever learning and never able to come into the knowledge of the truth, just 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 opening up their ears, or having itching ears just to. Keep it to themselves, teachers, you know, that that's telling them something that they want to hear. So if you see a, a big congregation and majority of, of, of the congregation is filled with women, well, that's because that pastor, he's saying all the right things that most of these women want to hear. You know, smooth things. Us, we stick straight to the script. Most people ain't going to... Uh, you know, when when you when you bring out the the the, <laughs> the rawness of the scriptures, man, and what the scriptures gotta say, most people true colors show that they really are offended at the word of the most high. And even Yahweh Shai said offenses must come. So, you know, it is what it is. And we when we got sisters that 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 follow us. And you know that they're sincere because even the things that we say, you know, we even we get on a woman and, and the sisters, they be in agreement, like, yeah. You know. They agree. So it is what it is, man. But anyway, you know, I'm 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 gonna end off with that, man. You know, I just want to uh, you know, do a reply. You know, this guy, he's uh, you know, he's weak sauce. So I'm going to end up with that. I'm going to give all praise to y'all. I'm watching y'all shy to the next lesson. Shalom.